Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we are actually covering Darko with Dylan on it. Unfortunately not using the new skin that just recently came out here, but Dylan is probably one of the better Darko players here in NA. Today we've actually got Shuvi Senpai with us. How are you doing Shuvi? Pretty good, hello, hello. Awesome, and yeah, I'm really excited to see some Darko gameplay. I mean, this character, the last time we covered him here on this channel, we actually had some discussion about where his builds were gonna go, if he was gonna be more bruiser, more damage, more tanky. And I believe when we covered Dapper Duck, he was definitely playing a more tank side. So I'm really excited to see where Dylan sort of like takes this character uh, in this in this game. For sure. You can see it in the early stages of the game right now. He already has the Statue of Soteria built up. That's one of the most classic bats that Darko has ever built ever since his release. But a couple of other items that he's able to build now, especially in the current day and age, with a lot of builds being really, really optimized. Now, we are seeing Dylan playing a three zone route where he goes to Cemetery Hospital and then now into Fire Station, or sorry, Police Station. But there's a lot of builds right now where you can actually two zone a lot of things. I know there's one from, I think, Gas Station to Archery Range. There's actually one from Cemetery to Hospital. Hospital, so I'm kind of surprised that Dylan is going all the way to police station to finish his build. But there are so many different ways to go about it, and you can see that with this build right here too. The welding helmet, the Creed of Knights, the UD suit, it's a perfect balance between a lot of health as well as a lot of damage. Exactly, yeah, and I think that's exactly it. I think he's doing that three zone just to really get the maximum optimization of his items that he possibly can, not trying to cut any corners. And I mean, he got there with the wolf spawn, so he's already clearing farm perfectly fine. Now, for anyone that's not familiar with Darko as a character, let's just go over his kit real quick. So starting off with his passive Sly Thief, Darko, when every time he performs a basic attack, he actually steals a percentage of his target's defense. Next is Lone Shark. So Darko passively just gains movement speed towards enemy test subjects. This is just a natural effect. But he also has, if you activate it, his next basic attack will deal additional damage. And that target gets marked. And if he deal, uses the ability again on the same target, he'll actually make them take increased damage as well. Next is his Got Money. So Darko gets a shield and slows enemy test subjects nearby. And his shield actually gets stronger per enemy test subject hit. Nice, quite nice. You can see it being utilized a couple of times in this fight and there's a little part about that shield as well where he steals a little bit of attack power from people who he hits it on but it's like five at max level and you do not max this thing until you're max level so for a majority of the game you're stealing one attack power from people and well you know, it is nice. I guess you get a shield out of it too. That, that's just funny. <laughs> I, I think, you know, I hope that there is definitely somewhere is a fight that had mathematically proven that him stealing that attack power won him that fight. <laughs> Next thing we have here is his, it's pay time. So Darko dashes forward and slams the ground and he'll deal damage and knock enemies airborne if they're hit. And then lastly is his ultimate intimidation tactic. He'll grab an enemy test subject, suppress them, and send them in a direction, and slam them into the ground. Enemies nearby will take damage and actually get slowed as well. Oh, kit just overall. For a character released very recently, his kit is extremely simple. It's to the point where I think a lot of people, if they are looking for... You know, I, I get a lot of questions from people that ask, Hey, Shubi, what kind of character should I play as a new player coming into Eternal Return? And, you know, I always used to go with the classics of things like the Yuki, the Aya, the Ava. But Darko's kit is very simple enough to the point where I can reliably say you can try playing Darko. But now, of course, we are watching Dylan here today, like, you've been watching throughout the video so far he is a step above the rest very very seasoned darko player he brought this character out a lot in competitive during season four and we saw a lot of really good plays from him so we'll see if we can replicate some of that here in the game in season five oh for sure and exactly i actually have to agree i think darko is a really really simple character to utilize and use but i mean when you definitely get in the hands of a character a player like dylan you actually realize there is a lot more to master on this character than just the basics. But I think this is definitely a really quick, very simple game plan of go in, you know, CC people, pull someone back towards your team or pull someone into a group of the enemy team and do a bunch of damage. So very, very um, 
straightforward tactic with his abilities. Exactly. One of the biggest things about Darko that I did throughout the course of competitive, and of course I'm bringing out a lot of competitive because I did watch a lot of it during season four and just kind of like see how Darko evolved throughout the course of the season. Because after all, he is a character that was released that was released in season four, and you know you brought it up earlier with Dapper Duck on the video that you did before about how Darko's build itself was gonna go, and I was also wondering that so, pretty much throughout the entire course of season four, but towards the end there was a lot of shift in how he actually gets played because you look at intimidation tactic and it makes you think that he's a character that really likes to go in but i think he's actually a really good character that plays really well reactively to whatever the enemy really tries to do because you can completely isolate a target away whether it's the front line away from his team away from their teammates or a back line completely away from the fight and using your q you can just constantly deal damage to them with the bonus mark damage as well he's so good at reactive gameplay and dylan was so good at doing that throughout the course of season four yeah and i actually i have to absolutely agree with you i will say one of my favorite teams to look at which i think was internet raps darko uh mm -hmm. with uh G ram ranch's team was the utilization of darko to alt people backwards into his team and having the team isolate and take down whatever target darko sort of separated and look at that, I mean, just right there, right? Nine Eye Cash getting immediately bursted down. He got caught out by a explosive bullet coming through from the Bernice, and as soon as he realized that, by the time the cooldown, uh, or not the cooldown, but the crowd control duration was just about to run out, he immediately jumps in with the Z and reacts to what his teammates are able to do. This is the kind of punishment that Darko is able to dish out, makes fights so much easier for not just him, but for his teammates to also play around, because he can buy so much time with just his E. His ultimate is also really good at buying time as long as you're able to throw people into a wall right next to you just because it's added crowd control it, it he's so good <laughs> oh exactly and also i really really like this pickup we've actually seen this pickup very commonly on a lot of bruiser characters the elysian halo i'm not sure what your thoughts are on elysian halo but i think this item is incredibly good i mean the two second cooldown of every time you just press an ability you're just gonna do this percentage hp damage and it just works so well on these kind of characters like Darko. It blends really well with him as well, because if you want to hover over the Legion Halo stats real quick, it actually lines up really well with his Q, right? Because the cool thing about his Q is that, yeah, we're talking about the mark bonus damage, but inherently it has max HP scaling for damage as well. The fact that the cooldown on it is so low, it just pairs really well with how often you're able to proc the Legion Halo, and it brings up his damage as a bruiser up in the front line just so much the moment you bring this up. And now that you don't even have to level up a point into your tactical skill anymore he can get that super super early well exactly and actually talking about the the cooldown lineup it's actually almost perfect elysian halo is on a two second and his q is on a 2.1 second at 30 percent so you're literally a 0.1 second off from constantly always guaranteeing that you're going to proc your elysian halo onto a target and it's not the other way around, right? Where his Q is the one is the point one second ahead, so you know for sure that every time you have your Q back up, you know your Elysian Halo is going to be back up too. It is filthy how good Darko is uh, is uh, using that Elysian Halo. Probably, if anything, by far one of the best characters in such a long time to be able to utilize that item to almost its maximum capacity. Exactly. And actually, you know, thinking about it here, regardless of where these builds turn, I genuinely think that you could take Darko in any direction. If you just put a Legion Halo on him and then you built anything else, I think he'd be set because I think a Legion Halo is just the basic core bread and butter of where you're gonna get your damage from. And then you can go as tanky or more damage as you want based on what you prefer. This one looking like more tanky with like the myth armor. I'd see them coming through in a fight in just a moment. Bernice did end up using the ult, but look, you see how he's splitting away the rest of his team, and now that somebody's in here, he can use the Intimidation tactic, although he's not going to get a chance to. We're going to see the Tsubami taken down, there's the Johan just completely isolating him away. This is the kind of character that you really do want to take a look at the overall fight, right? It almost, you have to be the umpire or the referee of a fight and just kind of take it in a certain direction as soon as it begins. He's going to pressure the Laura even further because he knows that now it is day three. 
Kyrie, the rest of his, her teammates can't really come back unless she reses. And he has a bit of the chasing potential. I don't know if it's fully going to happen, but with the Adela coming in like this, yeah, the possibilities are going to be there. There's a Siphon Maelstrom trying to do more damage, and Dolores should get taken out there. It's going to be one more Q added on with the Elysian Halo damage. That is an overkill and a half if I've ever seen one. Oh, for sure. And I mean, again, we, I mean, Darko's kit naturally lets him chase. Like we mentioned, you know, the, the passive on his uh, his Q, just giving him movement speed towards targets. And then also, you know, just being able to dash forward naturally a lot of times, just to be able to close that gap even more towards the target. Yeah. And a lot of people, by the way, you know, I, we're talking about a lot of hypotheticals when it comes to Darko, but it's been <laughs> showing, right? As soon as we saw a lot of information about season five, a lot of people were saying, oh, Darko is going to be so good. Because guess what? Monkey King Bar also got an update. This item was actually something that a lot of Darkos didn't take in Season 4. They decided to go for the the Rod of Hearts immediately instead of just transitioning into the Monkey King Bar instead, although it had really good stats. But now that it has Critical Blow, he heals throughout the course of the fight. It is, yeah. it is ludicrous. Added on to Siphon Maelstrom's healing as well. You know, we haven't even been talking about this, but this has also been one of the biggest changes about Darko throughout the course of the season as well. I say course of the season, but it's the beginning. Season 5 just added so many conveniences to Darko to make him excel in almost everything he wants to do. Well, exactly. And I mean, again, I, I want to go back and talk about this Monkey King bar because Monkey King bar last season was such a high topic for a lot of people for the simple fact that it was probably the upgrade that you never wanted to get like you were like i can get it it's an upgrade but i mean my base weapon is almost just as good and it doesn't cost me 250 credits to make whereas now like you mentioned this healing effect to it just makes it so like oh my god we have a mithril i absolutely yeah i'd love to make my weapon this is where, you know, all jokes aside, we were talking about the attack damage, attack power reduction earlier on. That makes the healing coming from Critical Blow just so much more effective, even if it's one. You know how he has a very, very high base stat. His health right now sitting at 2.9k, sitting on the Mithril armor, as well as the, the, Knight of the Shield of Kings at the moment as well. It is ludicrous how long he can actually stay in a fight. And as I said earlier, he can isolate targets away from the rest of their team. And you know what that means? He's taking even less damage throughout the course of the fight. That critical blow is so, so good on him to sustain him throughout the fight too. Yeah, and also, uh, if I understand correctly, when he, steal, he steals that attack power, like, he gains that to himself, right? Oh, uh, I... I couldn't know, tell you that. Right? I don't remember. I'll, I'll keep track of it throughout the course yeah. of the fight. <laughs> because in theory, if that is how it works, based on how I've read it, I've never actually played Darko and watched it. But if that's how it works, that's 15 attack power if he hits all three, right? That is true. If that is indeed how it works, that would be absolutely wild. And looking at the phrasing itself it makes me think that yes that is absolutely the case so we'll keep an eye out but again it is the last thing that he's going to upgrade you can see it on the skill levels right now only three points into that shield he is sitting at level 18 so that should almost be leveled up to the max at this point and yeah it's just really really annoying to deal with the darko especially when most of his kit just kind of relies on chasing people down he has the utility to do it he has the damage to do it and we're not even talking about the defense shred on his passive right now either it is scary yeah the other thing that's really really scary too is i mean we're in a very like hybrid build right now like we have we have multiple items that can help us build for more damage but we have we go up to 200 defense i saw that proc up to and have 3.1k hp this is almost as tanky as some characters like my the only difference being is that like Darko lacks that defensive button. He has the shield, but he doesn't have anything that really like reduces damage incoming. Exactly. It is one of the reasons why I said that play, him playing reactive is a lot better. Because in comparison to what a lot of people might think, especially just with this kid alone, he is a bruiser in the end, right? He's not an actual bona fide tank. And even if you build him that way, that means you're taking away from a lot of the pressure that Darko can put on. So this hybrid build of damage plus tankiness is really what he likes to go for. But you can't just slam yourself into a fight out of nowhere just because you have a couple of these items. And throughout the course of the game so far, we're actually seeing Dylan 
do that perfectly. And we'll see how he decides to take this fight. Who is going to pull the trigger? There is explosive, explosive bullet landing actually over onto the Lenny. And you can see that his E doesn't go that far. He's not overreaching for any targets. Using the bad skill does get the double knockup coming through from the Yam. But look at the damage return coming in from this Darko. It is absolutely wild, Nine Eye. Now being the last one alive, this Lion has probably absolutely no chances as soon as that transformation finishes. Although the Lenny is sitting around and it does make it a little bit annoying. Nice knock up over towards the Lion. The Bernice is already down on the ground. Adela just waiting a little bit more maybe for her cooldowns, but it's just not going to happen. It's going to be a one for one trade so far. And as the Adela buys a little bit of time, Lenny also going to try to get the res, but the Adela should be able to stop that one. It's just a really, really good fight. And now this Lion by themselves, Lenny, following through, they're just going to back away from it. It's a one for one, but the advantage goes to Dylan's team. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, really, really, really good control on those plays. Because, yeah, a lot of Darkos will try to max range their E to try and land a knockout. But he literally positioned it to try and make sure that if they tried to press forward, they would get knocked up. Not that he was going to press forward and knock them up. Trying to play that protect the Bernice, play that extra pace, uh, spacing, keep that safety net for his team and be able to disrupt anyone. Because I'm guaranteed if he knocked someone up there, he was probably going to send them deeper into his team to kill... Uh, if they went over too far without their, their team being able to follow up. Exactly. I don't think I've seen a single fight where Dylan actually started the fight with his E. It's always been the Bernice looking for this long-range pick with the explosive bullet. And so. we did see it land in the fight just now, although kind of missed the mark. I think he was going for the Yam, but it landed on the Lenny instead. Still, Dylan knows control, and the fights have been working so far. They haven't really had to use any credits for any resurrections. They were able to bring back the Bernice in that fight as well. And now he has tap roots, 40% cooldown reduction on the character that, quite frankly, doesn't have any to begin with, let's be real here. Yeah. Uh, it's He's a very, very scary, scary Darko right now. The other thing that's really interesting too, and talking about his like self-control in these kind of fights, is when that Lenny got ulted, I guarantee, I feel like most Darkos there would have seen that, would have went yep. in onto the knockup, into the alt, onto the Lenny and tried to kill her, and then sort of like left his team to take care of the two melees. But I really respect that Dylan actually played that really slow and did not overextend to just get the greedy kill on the Lenny that got caught. Exactly. I don't think he would have even been able to kill because the Adela was too far away. The Bernice was also too far away. It was a stray explosive bola that ended up just catching out the Lenny. Nothing really big or significant when it comes to the course of the fight itself. He's reacting a lot. Of course, he did get double knocked up by the Yam, but in the end, it's just the fact that he's able to react to some of those fights, taking advantage of the fact that other teams have to initiate onto him, and the fact that he has an Adela in his team as well, right? That's even more crowd control that is easily set up for for a Darko as long as he plays reactive. He's playing according to how his team needs him to play. Absolutely. Now, we'll have to see where they're going to end up going at this point. I mean, they're just going to be going through it. I'm pretty sure the team, yeah, the team's completely full build with double bloods or we're getting tax skill upgrades. I think we're just getting our final buy-ins with our items now, just getting our upgrades on the team. And then I think it should be just looking for fights. I mean, there's three teams left. We know there's no one in forest. We're gonna have to check school. Don't know which team took Wick. It is night number five, so somebody's already taken it, right? Because Wick is going to spawn night number four. That's already gone. Our final two zones are going to be Fire Station and Forest. It's been a bit of a quieter past couple minutes for Dylan's team, as a lot of teams were fighting on the northern side of the map, whereas they've been sitting inside the forest area, just kind of building themselves up, getting a couple more items, maybe a couple more mastery hunts along the way as well. I think, if I could have remembered correctly, they're all around that Weapon Mastery 20 at the moment. Nice check coming in from the Kadia. Oh, it was a nice jump away from the IRM as well, but immediately jumping over onto the Arda. The IRM cannot react to that at all and cannot save the Arda. There's the chase down onto the Kadia. She's going to jump the wall, but of course, this fight is already good as done. There it is, Adela Queen to knock down the Kadia. That right there. A perfect example of how you're able to take away a focus attention span of one specific player that has all the crowd control in the world on that team to deny them from doing anything immediately allow your team to find somebody else to kill and now it's a 2v3 oh exactly yeah i mean really good play from a lot of the team there i mean i think definitely the bernice and the adela took a lot of the spotlight in that fight there but i mean 
Dylan played the support role so well in just making sure that his teammates had the room to breathe. And like you mentioned, I mean, took out Irem, made sure that Irem wasn't going to be a disruption, let them easily be able to focus the targets they want to focus and created a lot of space. I mean, completely shut out the Kacha for half that fight as well. Such a good player at controlling how the the pace of the fight itself goes. Now, this is another really nice thing that you could do with the introduction of all the temporary zones. I don't know if you talked about it in any of your previous videos, Athena, but we saw Dylan as soon as it hit day number six, just kind of hang inside for forest for half a second and then come immediately back into school because up at the top of the screen, he saw that there were two teams left. Final zone was guaranteed to be school and he had enough time to outlast the duration in which school is going to be close for so stays outside for a split second gets his timer slightly above what the original timer would have been and then takes control over the entirety of school look at how much information this team has in comparison to the other one yeah exactly utilizing that is definitely really really helpful especially if you're okay well adela just <laughs> instantly takes out the isol that fight ended almost instantaneously not even needing much work from darko but darko just instantly takes out the barber and i think that's going to be kind of the wrap up for the team here as we see a clean fight and yeah everyone that is darko's gameplay with dylan impressive I'm glad and I was ho kind of hoping that Dylan made a really big play at the end there, but I guess it's another great example of just reacting, right? Routini ending up knocking down the Barber immediately from the get-go. It puts it down into a 2v3. All of this was kind of built up from the successful fights throughout the course of the game anyway, so that was a Dylan carry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We will call that a Dylan carry. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you in the next one.